Hello, my name's Claire, and I'm going to read the second part of Bedtime for Francis. She took a good look at him. There was no giant. This was just the chair and her bathrobe. So she went to bed again. Francis was, was not very tired and did not close her eyes. She looked up at the ceiling. There was no, there was a crack in the ceiling and she thought about it. Maybe something will come out of that crack, she thought. Maybe bugs or spiders. Maybe something with a lot of skinny legs in the dark. She went to get father. He was brushing his teeth. Francis said, something scary is going to come out of the crack in the ceiling. I forgot to brush my teeth. Father said, you brush your teeth and I will have a look. Frances brushed her teeth. Father came back and said, nothing could come out of such a little crack. But if you are worried about it, get somebody to help you watch. You can take turns. Frances told her teddy bear to watch, watch. They took turns for a while. Then Frances got tired of it and let Teddy do all the watching. Frances got up and went to the bathroom. She, when she came back, she was not sleepy at all. The window was open and the wind, why, wind was blowing the curtain. I do not like the way those curtains are moving, Francis said. Maybe there is something waiting very soft and quiet. Maybe it moved the curtains just to see if I am watching. She went into mother and father's room to tell them. They were asleep. Francis stood by father's side of the bed, very quietly, right near his head. She was so quiet that she was the quietest thing in the room. She was so quiet that father woke up all of a sudden, with his eyes wide open. He said, um. Francis said, there is something moving the curtains. May I sleep with you? Father said, Listen, Francis, do you want to know why the curtains are moving? Why? said Francis. That is the wind's job, said Father. Every night the wind has to go around and blow all the curtains. How can the wind have a job? said Francis. Everybody has a job, said Father. I have to go to my office every morning at nine o'clock. That is my job. You have to go to sleep so you can be wide awake for school tomorrow. That is your job, Francis said. I know, but Father said, I have not finished. If the wind does not blow the curtains, he will be out of a job. If I do not go to the office, I will be out of a job. And if you don't, do not go to sleep now, do you know what will happen to you? I will be out of a job, said Francis. No, said Father. I will get a smanking, said Francis. Right, said Father. Good night, said Francis. And she went back to her room. Francis closed the window and got into bed. Suddenly, there was a noise at the window. She heard bump and thump.
I know something will get me this time, she thought. She jumped out of bed and went to tell mother and father. When she got to their door, she thought about it some more and decided not to tell them. She went back to her room. Frances heard the noise at the window again. She pulled the covers over her head. I wonder what it is, she thought. If it is something very bad, Father will have to come and chase it away. She pulled up the covers and stood on her bed so she could look out of the window. She saw a moss bumping against the window. Bump and thump. His wings smacked the glass. Whack and smack. Whack and smack made Frances think of the spanking, and all of a sudden she was tired. The lay down, she lay down and closed her eyes so she couldn't think better. She thought there were so many giants and tigers and scary and exciting things before that I am pretty tired now. That I just a moth. That is just a moth, and he is only doing his job the same as the wind. His job is bumping and thumping, and my job is to sleep. So she went to sleep and did not get out of bed again until mother called her for breakfast. The end. Thank you for listening to the book, Bedtime for Chances.